So um, I guess what uh, I really want to do today is just talk about the, some of the organisms in soil and I think farmers have been told for many many years all about all the bad things I got in the soil but I haven't been told about the good things that I've got in the soil and we're dealing with the most uh, I guess the com most complex system in the world. There's millions and millions of organisms in soil and this sort of little diagram sort of shows you've got bacteria which are very tiny, fungi, protozoans are things that eat bacteria and if you just take a teaspoon of healthy soil you have billions of bacterial cells. You'll have hundreds and hundreds of metres of fungal hyphae. Uh, you have enormous numbers of protozoans and nematodes and things. So. But uh, I really just want to quickly run through some of the things these things do. So bacteria and fungi are very important. They de decompose all the organic matter that we produce in the soil. They hang on to nutrients. We've got major problems in Queensland with you know, nutrients going out, out to the reef, for example. Everyone, all the governments are worrying about that. Of course, they cause plant disease and they also suppress them. And just a couple of examples here. On this side, that, that's a bacteria, and you can see that you know, the, the, the phytophthora is growing, growing quite happily towards that bacteria, but this one here, that bacteria is producing an antibiotic that's stopping the, you know, the fungus from growing towards it. So in, in the soil, there's, you know, there's a lot of organisms in the soil that are you know, trying to defend their territory by doing something to stop you know, all their competitors, and antibiotic production is certainly one. Uh, this is an example of a, uh, a fungus that's evolved the capacity to catch nematodes. Produces these traps, the nematodes walk, uh, wriggle through, get caught by that trap and then the fungus invades and kills, kills them. So there's a lot of beneficial things in the soil as well as bad things. Most farmers probably think that the nematodes are all bad. They, they feed on the roots of the plants or get into your tubers for example and cause damage. But there's a lot of beneficial nematodes. You know, there are, Nematodes like this that have got a tooth that actually feed on other, other nematodes. That big nematode there you know, actually feeds on other nematodes. So it's a predator of the, some of the you know, things that we're trying to control. That's a fungal feeding nematode. Those nematodes feed on fungi. And they feed on good fungi and bad fungi. And then there's the plant parasites, the ones we're concerned about that have a spear that they use to put into their plant cells and suck out the contents. So, so I guess again, you know, it's a matter of having a picture of the whole system rather than just the pest part of the system. Microarthropods, little tiny uh, organisms, uh, most of them are only probably 250 microns, which is about 0.25 of a millimetre, three, uh, five, uh, half a millimetre long, they're very small, but they feed on all sorts of things in soil. They feed on fungi, they, feed, they help to decay organic matter, and some of them feed on nematodes, for example. So, um, so they have a ro major role in regulating what's happening in the soil uh, and they, every time something eats something else in soil there is mineralisation of nutrients and I'll talk a bit about that a bit later. Earthworms are really nature's cultivators and uh, they, ha they have a couple of important roles. They improve the aeration of the soil, you know, they create these macropores in the soil so that when, when it rains you know, there will be some drainage, help, drainage and aeration in the soil. They, they take organic matter down the profile, you know, organic matter that's perhaps near the, in the surface on decaying vegetation that is moved down through the profile by things like earthworm. So why, why are they important? What are their main roles? They help the physical properties in the soil. So um, we want soils that aggregate, you know, the soil particles aggregate together so that there's aeration and drainage and things like fungi are very important in creating, creating aggregation. They produce uh, chemicals that hold soil particles together, they actually help uh, soil particles bind together. And that, uh, then we've got things like earthworms making holes that create the drainage. So, so, so having a, a, a good biology means you'll have a good, good soil phys physical properties which allows roots to grow relatively easily through the soil. The second thing is plant nutrition. I've already mentioned the fact we've got bacteria like rhizobia that produce nitrogen. Um, but they also hang on to nutrients and, mineral, and mineralise nutrients. Bacteria in the soil have a carbon nitrogen ratio of about 4 to 1 and the nematodes that eat them have a carbon nitrogen ratio of about 6 to 1. So what happens is this, um, this nematode down here has eaten three bacteria. So it's got 
four carbons from that bacteria, four carbons from that bacteria, and four carbons from this bacteria. But it's also got one nitrogen from each of those. So it's basically got all its carbon and nitrogen it needs. So there's an extra nitrogen left over. So that's nematode poo. So basically that nitrogen is excreted. And that's the nitrogen, that's the nitrate or ammonia that's excreted that's used by plants. So that's the process of mineralisation where, where something eats something else and there's a bit left over which is the mineralised. So, every time, so the more biology you've got and the more of these sort of processes you've got, you're going to get more of that, those nutrients released. And that's happening not just for nitrogen but also for phosphorus and potassium and all the other nutrients. And it's, it's not just nematodes, you know, every time a protozoan eats a bacteria, the same process is going on. So it's, it's really about a whole range of organisms in the soil mineralising these nutrients and making them available to plants. So, so I guess the challenge in agriculture is working out how much you're going to get from, from what's there in that sort of natural system and how much you have to add so that you're not overusing chemicals. And I guess that's the challenge which I think we're still trying to face in terms of research to really understand that better. Getting on to some of the organisms that cause problems, and uh, every crop's got different pathogens, but uh, uh, they certainly, uh, uh, I guess the point I'm really making in this talk is that even though you've got pathogens that are destroying roots, you've also got uh, organisms in the soil that will help you keep them under control. Uh, mycorrhizae are just one of the beneficial organisms in soil. Um, there's a couple of photographs. So these fungi are actually grow within the roots. And you know, most people would think, oh, something that's growing in the roots has got to be a parasite. But these are actually beneficial. The plant actually benefits from them. Uh, they forage through the soil and their main role has been thought to be uh, picking up phosphorus from the soil. But they do a lot of other things. You know, they produce a chemical called glomalin, which tends to hold soil particles together and creates aggregation of the soil. So that's a beneficial thing. They improve the drought tolerance, so it's really like an extension of the root system. You've got all these fungi ramifying through the soil, extending the root system so they can pick up water e more easily. And there's also evidence that they enhance disease resistance. So it seems to be you know, the first, the, the organisms in there first um, uh, gives you some disease control. So you know, the, uh, the, the mycorrhizae has occupied this space, so if a fungus or a nematode wants to invade that tissue, there's certainly scientific evidence that you'll get less of those pathogens when, when the mycorrhizae are there first. So I think, and one of the problems we have is we use a, a lot of phosphorus in our systems, and that tends to cause the mycorrhizae to drop away, and we don't have as many mycorrhizae as we we perhaps should have. Tillage, tillage knocks fungi around because they've got all these hyphae ramifying through the soil. It doesn't matter whether it's mycorrhizae or anything else. And so tillage is certainly, I think one of the reasons, are, and I'll show you some data later, one of the reasons that agricultural soils have become bacterially dominated because of all the tillage that we do. And so if you can stop tillage and you've got organic matter there, it's fungi that are really going to break down that, most of that organic matter. Certainly bacteria will use some of the easily utilisable substances like the proteins and sugars and things. But once that's ha gone, all the carbohydrates and lignans and all those sorts of parts of that organic matter will be fungal de decomposition. So, so yes, when you stop tilling, you tend to get more fungi. So really, I'm just really wanting to sort of finish by saying that you know, soil biology has a lot of important roles. It improves soil structure, does a lot to the soil physical side of things. It, it's, there's a whole lot of nutritional things that it's involved in. You, know, it, it, you get diseases from some of the biology, but you also get protection from the biology. And of course, it, there's a whole lot of degradation things whenever we, you know, we use a pesticide or a pollutant or something in the soil. That some, these bugs in the soil will grab hold of it and decompose it. So, so they have a, have a lot of important roles, uh, but really our agricultural soils, I think in general, uh, have we lost, we've lost a lot of organic matter. And um, this is just one example, but you could find hundreds of examples of, you know, this is some data from Queensland where a grower has taken natural vegetation and started, you know, initially plant um, maize and then sugarcane. And you can see the carbon levels have dropped from about 1.3 down to about 0.6 in 10 years, or eight, 8 or 10 years, and then they continue to drop. And that's really happened pretty well in all our agricultural soils, and we're, 
uh, we've probably lost 70 or 80 percent of our carbon in most of our agricultural soils and uh, and and really the biology of the soils is really dependent on carbon so it, if there's one message i really want to leave it's the fact that we really have to look at, after carbon if we're going to get a, a, a decent biology but yeah so the thing that's driving the biology are the crop residues that are coming back onto the soil surface and also root exudates and they're often forgotten so when plants photosynthesize, they actually take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and turn it into carbon in the plant. And they actually exude uh, carbon into the, out of their root system. What they're trying to do is they tr they're trying to feed some biology so that they've got a good, you know, strong biology around the root system to protect them against all the pathogens that are going to try and you know, show it's something that's evolved over millions of years. A lot of the battles in terms of getting a, a healthy biology is to have plants in the system all the time because they are the ones that are feeding the biology. And you take them away and you see, you see a lot of you know, cropping systems where there's a bare, bare soil for six months. It doesn't, we're in a, down here you've probably got hot, dry summers. Well, that's fine because during that everything closes down and so it's when you have a, you know, warm, moist soils and it's fallow. Like in you know, Queensland, for example, where a lot of the vegetable growers um, you know, might from November to February have a bare fallow. That's a disaster from a biological point of view because there's no carbon inputs into the system in that time. So I guess one of the principles is to try and keep a plant in the system as much as you can. All of these higher order organisms are really dependent on get, having those bacteria and fungi and they're very dependent on having carbon from, either, from plants. Um, uh, that's a very big slide, uh, uh, but really just uh, really says that you know, organic matter has a major impact on a lot of different soil functions. Uh, you get a lot lower bulk density, you know, you've got a lot uh, less weight per unit volume, and so you've got roots can grow through that soil better, uh, better aeration. The more carbon you have, you get better root growth, you get better water infiltration better water holding capacity and so on and so on. There's just a lot of things that, uh, you know, that, that uh, carbon is very important. Higher cation exchange capacity holds more nutrients, fewer losses of nutrients to the environment. So, so carbon is very important and from a general perspective but it's very, very almost in, uh, even more important from a biological perspective.